Have you ever been asked about the reason for the faith that is within you? In a recent discussion with an atheist, the adversary exhibited his sincere detestation toward the things of God and spewed his rebellion, his hatred, and misguided beliefs against all that represents Christ, his word, and his followers. He writes, furthermore, the Bible is full of contradictions. And, of all the known transcripts from which the Bible is derived, no two transcripts read the same. They're all different in some way. The scribes who put the words to paper all took poetic license and other liberties, dash therefore in the maligned view of the atheist, they render the word of God as no more authentic than any other person's opinion in spite of the fact that the Bible was written by faith-filled men who chose to serve God rather than themselves. 2 Peter 1,20-21 remarks on the faith of these compilers. First of all, you should know this, no prophecy of scripture comes from one's own interpretation, 21 because no prophecy ever came by the will of man, instead, men spoke from God as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. My premise is that it takes greater faith to be an atheist than to be a follower of Jesus and since most atheists and apostates have fallen into this demonic propaganda trap that is validated only by their five senses, sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch, as Jesus' ambassadors, it is our job to participate with the Holy Spirit who acts as a sixth sense in us by sharing the revealed knowledge of God's love, mercy, and forgiveness. God's indwelling Holy Spirit is in the process of renewing our minds and changing the way we think, He transforms our understanding of our Creator. I am compiling this Breakfast Bible Bites to give an answer to the inherited logic of the unredeemed mind and invite them to test the spirit of understanding through the power of our Creator and His Holy Word. You may be one that already has a deep understanding of what we are covering, therefore, I hope that you will openly participate by sharing the Spirit's wisdom as He speaks through you also. Together, we seek to prepare an acceptable answer for the scriptural skeptic, by giving a comprehensive reason for the faith that is within us. To answer the humanist objection, I offered this opinion, if they were authoring a book that purports to speak of their perceived God that they desire everyone to worship, would they include such things as Christians being stoned or murdered, would they crucify the idol of their manuscript? Would you or I apart from the influence of God's inspiring spirit? Yet the Bible does not try to detract, nor embellish any of these things for they all speak of the wickedness of the human nature that God did not create, but rather was modified by Adam as our progenitor. It was Adam that chose to add evil into the pure and holy nature that our God created in him. The fact that the Bible includes these things should prove to you that it was not written by egotistical men with their own agenda.